Дамы и господа, уважаемые фотографы, у вас будет две минуты. Джонни Ноксвилл и Арнольд Шварценеггер. situation. A violent fugitive making a run for the Mexican border. Was I scared going from politics back into films? And uh, I don't think there was anything scary about it because I, I had the chance of doing a film first with Sylvester Stallone, which was called The Expendables. And this was kind of a cameo. And that kind of gave me a little warm up before I went to, Me to New Mexico and did the film The Last Stand. Um, <clears throat> I think at the beginning you always are concerned would the people or the fans accept you back uh, to be a star in a movie, to be the leading man in a movie. But I think after I saw the reaction in the film The Expendables, when I came on the screen there was always applause by the audience. So I knew that there was a positive reaction so I felt really good about that. And I felt confident that the people were wel welcoming back uh, into the movie business. So I, I am very happy that I have chosen this character uh, of Sheriff Owens uh, to be a tough sheriff uh, in a little town in, in, uh, uh, in the United States and on the Mexican border. And, uh, but someone that has been considered, you know, kind of a little bit over the hill. Someone that's about to retire and no one expected him to be able to do the kind of things that he does in order to succeed. And uh, so I felt good with the character that I played and I will be in the future playing interesting characters like that. The last time I've starred in the film was 10 years ago in 2003, which was Terminator 3. And uh, I think since then um, I gotten wiser And I think that uh, because of my experience in politics and because of my experience as a governor of the great state of California, I think that that really has added to my acting ability because of the experiences that I've had. So there's no two ways about it that, uh, you know, what I've learned in acting helped me in my political career and what I have learned in politics helped me in my acting career. Oh! Hey, Ray, how you doing, man? There's an escaped fugitive coming through town. You're looking jacked, Ray. You've been working out. Why'd you give me the damn thing? Very proud of The Last Stand. Uh, we, uh, I got to work with Arnold Schwarzenegger, who I grew up idolizing, and, uh, you know, he was, I uh, was very intimidated to meet him, you know, because he is who he is, but he was so kind and uh, made everyone feel so comfortable on the set, and, uh, Yeah, I had a ball. It's, it's a dream come true working with him. And we had a wonderful director, Kim Ji Woon, uh, who directed The Good, Bad, and the Weird in many wonderful films. Uh, are you uh, translating this or? Uh, yeah, they're, okay, they're great. Because right. I'm just rattling on. But uh, Kim Ji Woon's a brilliant director. We had a great cast and uh, just so happy to be back in Russia. Well, first of all, let me just say it is the first time that I have been to Russia with a film. I've never really been here to promote a film. Um, I've come here many, for many reasons. I remember that I was a big fan of Russia, especially in the beginning of Russian weightlifters. Uh, that's why I got into weightlifting and into bodybuilding, because I admired Russian weightlifters. If it was Yuri Flasov or Chapodinsky uh, or Alexiev, these were all my heroes. And so I came to visit them, I remember, in the 70s and in the 80s. And then we did, of course, The Great Heat here, a film uh, which, which we shot partially in Russia. Uh, and then I came over here uh, to, uh, uh, on a trade mission as the governor of the state of California. And uh, that was a wonderful trip and a great, great experience. Uh, and this time is the first time that I've been here in this country to promote a film. I think it's great to have a whole new market here that uh, our films are opening up here and they can be shown here. As much as we look forward to seeing Russian films, 
uh, in the United States and all over the world. I think that the movie business has become a global business, and I think those movies should be shown worldwide. So I hope that uh, I have as much success with my films over here as I've had with other things in Russia. Well, it was very difficult for me to play an older guy because I feel so young. And, uh, but I mean, uh, the character was such that he was about to retire, and therefore he is a somewhat vulnerable character because he's not anymore like he used to be when he was on a LA uh, uh, SWAT team, where he was one of the toughest guys, so age has caught up with that character. He's about to retire, and now all of a sudden you have those very dangerous drug cartel, uh, members of a drug cartel, they're mercenaries, they're very well trained with heavy, heavy weapons, they're descending on our little town, which is a town that maybe has a population of 4,000. And uh, this sheriff and his deputies are not at all equipped to take on such an uh, enemy. And so it becomes kind of the story about the underdog about someone that is not expected to win, and then on the end he has to succeed in order to save his town. So that's basically, what it's, it's an underdog type of a story or type of a movie. And with some funny incidences, which of course, again, John in Knoxville is responsible for. Hello. I just want to say that his character may be older, playing older, uh, but on the set and with all the stunts and just leading everyone, he went twice as hard as myself or anyone else. I can't keep up with him. He's in incredible shape. Me? Yeah. To save their town. I got an idea. This unlikely team is bringing out the big guns. You never know. Very nice. Oh. Like I said, that to me, this was the first starring role again. And it was a wonderful movie to work on. And we had, a, as John has said, a very talented director. Uh, Kim Chi Woon, who is from South Korea, um, has, is the king of action movies in Asia. And he was a great addition. And to have him there, even though his English ability was limited, but he had two translators there, and we had no problem understanding him or communicating with him. And I think he did an extraordinary job with the whole thing. So uh, uh, it, it is strange in a way, and uh, you know, to go back. But then again, it was. I felt like I was welcome back with open arms. So I'm, I'm very happy to be back again. I think that uh, in Kindergarten Cop, uh, the the character that I played in Kindergarten Cop, where I played a cop and also a kindergarten teacher, I think that 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 character came the closest to who I am. Uh, I would say the second one is maybe well. Uh, the second one probably is uh, the character in Predator. Uh, when I go into the jungle and then all of a sudden I discover this monster, the Predator. You know, that character that I played there is also very similar to, and that's kind of the way I would have reacted, and that's the kind of things I would have done if I would have been under the circumstances. Um, I wish sometimes I could be the Terminator, but I'm not. <laughs> because if I would be the Terminator, the great advantage would be that I would not have to sleep because I'm a machine. Because I hate the idea of sleeping because we waste so much time, you know, with sleeping. But I mean, it, it, we would be so much further ahead if we could just learn something during the time when we sleep. Or have another job or something like that. I think that would be cool. But it's not reality, it's just, you know, an idea. So, but the, I, I enjoyed playing the character of, of Terminator because he's a machine that is indestructible. On the set, the set was really uh, open and fun because he walks on the set and he's having a ball and when the number one on the call sheet walks on the set with that attitude, it just makes it fun for everyone. And I didn't prank uh, that, I didn't, of course I didn't prank uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger because he bench presses 700 pounds and he would break me in two. And I have a lot of respect for him so I don't prank him. Uh, but it was a really fun movie to make, uh, and, uh, yeah. Who the hell are you? I'm the sheriff. When I was 18 years old, <clears throat> and I was in the Austrian army, I became a tank driver, which was always my big dream. 
And uh, so my dream became a reality. Uh, and I was for one year in the army and for one year I drove tanks. I had the greatest time learning all the, the, the how to drive all the big vehicles, trucks, and uh, 16 wheelers, 18 wheelers, and all of those things until they get to become a tank driver and uh, learn how to drive tanks. I went on many maneuvers with the tank and everything, so I got somewhat attached to my tank. Uh, so now I go to America. I go through my bodybuilding career, and I go through my acting career. And now it's 1990, and we are now getting involved with Planet Hollywood, with a, with a restaurant chain. And we thought it would be cool to have in front of the restaurant my tank from the Austrian army. Uh, so it was a long process, very difficult process to get that tank. First of all, to find the tank, because by now the tank was an old tank and it was not used anymore in Austria. But the Austrian military, uh, with the permission of the Americans, and sent the tank, found the tank exactly with the number 331 on it and sent it to America. And I had to pay for you know, the shipping, but the rest of it was a gift from the Austrian army. And uh, then I had it refurbished in America because it was an American tank. It was 1955 when it was the treaty uh, and Austria became independent. America gave various different countries all over Europe, American tanks. This particular one was, was called the M47. It's the patent tank. Uh, it's from the 50s. And uh, so we sent that tank over to America. We refurbished it, put new engines in it, put new tracks on it, and uh, repainted it. And it looks like brand new, and it's being used all the time uh, in movies or it's or used mostly also by me driving uh, children around and uh, having visitors come out. I just recently had a press conference out there and it drove all the press around uh, in the tank and we had a wonderful time. So it's not really considered a weapon per se as, as, as a fun vehicle. As a matter of fact, the cannon doesn't even shoot because it's, you're not allowed to shoot the cannon, you know. Driving around Los Angeles shooting a cannon would be, I think, somewhat against the law. Uh, but I mean, it's a fun vehicle to drive around with. So thank you for the question. I have safely. <laughs> nice shooting, Sheriff. Oh, hello. Oh, hello.